Welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about interactive creation in prim uh, polygon primitives. So in the last video, when we created a polygon primitive, in, in our case a sphere, it automatically created the object at a default one unit in the, in the origin of the scene. Now, if you want a little bit more control when creating objects, you can get that. Um, to do that, we turn on something called interactive creation. Interactive creation is found under polygon primitives. So go hover over create, hover over polygon primitive, then scroll over to interactive creation at the very, very bottom. And we, you can see this box is checked off. If I click on this, I can check it on. And it does save this setting, so you'll have to check it once. So let's check it. It shuts down the menu, but if we go back in and see, you can see at the very bottom, this box is on now. It is active. So if I click on the sphere now, what we, will, what we will do is it will not create a sphere automatically at the center. What it will do is give you a message instead and say, drag on grid. So if I click on there, you can see, sure enough, drag on grid. What that's telling you is I need to left click and hold somewhere on the grid. And wherever I do this, it will create the object at that point. So if I left click and hold, you can see it's creating the object. And I can scale this up and down based on when I, you know, however I like. And when I let go, it locks that tat dimension. So there it is. It is now that size. So there's the sphere. Now, if I delete that, come back in here. And we kind of skipped over these in the last lecture, but if we go through these, I'm not going to go through them all, but I'll go through many of the, a couple of these. Um, I encourage you to play with the ones I don't talk about, or the, even some of the others, because that's the best way to learn. But if I do cube, which is a cube, um, I get to a message that says drag on grid, comma, then drag for height. And what that is saying is that this is a two-step operation. The first click and hold determines the base. And then when I let go, I lock that first that first um, aspect, and then, the click, then I click and hold again to determine the second one. So you can see, click and hold, determine the base, second click and hold, determine the height. If you don't like it, of course, just delete it. They don't cost anything. And you can just try again. So again, you just go up to create, polygon primitive, cube, and so on. And you can create as many as you want. You know, as many as you want. Now, if you come up here and keep doing this to create polygon primitive, in this case cube, keep doing this, it can be kind of time consuming. So Maya has a universal quick key that lets you repeat your last used tool. Um, and whatever it is, it's whatever your last tool is. Um, it'll repeat it, and that is the G key. If you hit the G key, you can repeat whatever your last tool was. In this case, it was create polygon primitive cube. So if I hit G key, I can repeat this. So if I want to, I can kind of quick, fairly quickly come in here and get a bunch of different ones. Maybe you're blocking on a level or something, uh, you know, or a world. You can make a bunch of cubes here and, you know, get all different kinds. So you can see the G key is a quick way to repeat any last used tool. All right, so I'll go through a couple more of these. So the cube was a two-step process. The pipe, for example, or we'll do the cylinder first. Cylinder is also a two-step process. You know, cylinder. First click and hold was base. Second click and hold was height. Uh, go through the the pipe. Pipe is your a three. First one's base height and the thickness of the pipe. So the, all I'm doing is left clicking and holding, determine one property, I let go of the left mouse button, locks it, move to the next one by clicking and holding and dragging the mouse around and so on. So I keep going. Um, last one here I will talk about is the helix, which is a four step process. So we'll click on helix, click and hold, determines the base. Second click and hold, determines the height. The third click and hold, determines the number of coils, and the fourth and final click and hold, click and hold determines the section radius. So there you go. See? There it is. Now this is a pretty cool, great tool for, you know, like I said, using interactive creation to get these things in here. But um, what if we want to edit this further? We can edit these further by going into the inputs. Now what Maya is doing is if we were to, we're basically controlling what the numbers are to creation. Like I said, when we did the sphere, it was just creating a default one. When I click and hold on this, I don't know what this is. I don't know, let's just say five units sphere, but we don't know that. 
And there's no indication in the, the common transforms to tell you what this is. So this is found under the inputs of an object, and it, my does keep track of this stuff under the hood. So if you want to manipulate these things further, you can. So I'm going to create a couple objects here. You know, we'll start with the sphere. So if I click on the sphere, we can come over here into the inputs and the word that says inputs in the channel box, and it'll have a, uh, a name that used as poly, which stands for polygon. The object type, in this case, sphere, and one, just the number of objects that are in there. So if I click on this, it'll reveal more, 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 uh, more stats. In this case, and they're all going to be different based on whatever kind of object they are. The sphere has the radius, which is its radius in units. So if I want to make this an even two. I can just click two and hit enter, and you can see it is a radius of two now. You know, diameter of four. Diameter of four. So there it is. See, like that. And then they have these other attributes um, that called subdivisions. So subdivisions are kind of like the 3D resolution equivalent. Um, how many faces, how many polygons is it using to create that particular attribute of the object? So subdivisions, if I were to decrease this number, say four, you can see that it got really low, re use much less polygons, it only uses one, two, three, four, in that particular direction. If I decrease this other number, you can see we get much more primitive looking shapes here. Um, and then of course I can make it more have higher resolution as well. So we can mess with that universally. Um, what this is good for is um, kind of blocking in basic shapes. So let's say I was like, okay, I want to make like a stop sign kind of thing. I scaled this down. Oh, this is way too many sides. I can come into the poly inputs of the cylinder, for example. And it has slightly different ones, as mentioned earlier. It has a radius, which is very similar to the, obviously the sphere. If I can change these, if I want to you know, keep the radius a certain amount, and that's in units. It has a height, which determines how you know, tall this is in units. And a lot of students get confused, but there are double uh, stats for this. There's scale as well as a height parameter. We'll talk about the advantages of that, uh, that in a different lecture. But you can see if I want to be precise, I want for whatever, let's say again, a lot of times in game art you need to know exactly or you know, be more conscientious of the sizes. You're probably going to want to keep your stuff in units um, and the, your block ends are, you know, know those numbers. Um, so there's the height, it's in two units, whatever. Um, a subdivision along the axis, again, is the amount of divisions along the axis. So again, I was going for a stop sign type shape. If I change that to eight, you can see it now has eight sides. And then if we want to, you know, you know, there, stop sign. Now, again, these are going to be different for uh, each, uh, each object. So again, we have a radius and a height because it was two click and hold, two click and holds, and it has multiple subdivisions. Um, these ones aren't useful yet, but we ha we can mess with the height as well. Add subdivisions along the height, which again, not going to do anything if I click off this. It looks the exact same, but the point would be you can come in here and manipulate it after the fact, which we haven't got to yet. Um, however, we can already mess with the caps and do some th interesting things with that. So if I just change this number, I add divisions along the caps. Um, you're like, okay, well that didn't really do anything. Yeah, right now, again, this doesn't do anything because it's expecting to go edit things a lot down the road. However, with some objects, they have this something called round cap feature. Uh, cylinder is one of them. Um, if we increase this number, we can actually add a cap to this. So I'm going to set my caps back to one, just the default one. And then I'm going to turn on round caps on, and you can do that by just typing the word on here, or hit one and hit enter. It's like a boolean, on and off. So one, on. And you can see what it did is it added, increase the height a little bit, it added almost like pencil ends on this, this particular object, which, you know, maybe that's what you want. You want spikes or something. That's, that's, that's great. It automatically triangulates a spike for you. Um, but if you want to round these out, we can increase the number of along the caps. We're increasing the resolution. So I round out the caps. You can see it increases the resolution along the caps and creates a capsule or a pill-like shape. 
So you can come in here and you can manipulate these numbers and the, the, honestly the best way is just to come in here on a throwaway scene and play with all these things and just delete them after you're, you, you've played with them a little while. They don't cost anything. Um, it's you know cheap. It's just it's just pixels, so no problem there. So you can see we can mess with the caps function and some of these other ones to get unique shapes. And we'll talk about uh, um, more of these in details um, in particular lectures that where where it applies. So the last one I'm going to cover here on the, the create for the sake of time is the the the, uh, the helix, which is perhaps one of the more complicated primitives. It's just a spring. Um, it has four different basic attributes, coils, heights, width, radius, and so on. And we can change these numbers uh, just by coming in here and typing them. But sometimes, especially with something like coils, you probably are, you got it close, but you want to change it slightly. Um, and you can come in here and just keep guessing with numbers. Right? Just sit here, sit in here and typing these numbers. You know, come in here, type the numbers, and so on. Um, but the... Uh, Sometimes it's easier to manipulate the numbers interactively, and to do that, all you need to do is you need to select the the, the word, in this case coils, and if I middle hover my mouse in this window and middle mouse click and hold, I can drag my mouse left and right, and I can interactively change these values. I don't know if you guys can see, but the coils value is changing on the right hand side here, as I'm middle mouse clicking and holding, and this is true for everything. Um, not, perhaps not as useful in the translates and the rotates, but it's definitely very useful in the inputs. We can change these numbers interactively and see without having to sit here and type numbers. Um, so yeah, you can do that as well. Uh, the subdivisions, same thing. Uh, by now it's, it's just re repeat, but you know we can change the resolution of this stuff. You know, mess with the resolution, make interesting shapes. You know, increase or decrease the resolution. If you're doing game art, you might be more conscientious about how many polygons you give a particular particular object and things like that as a starting point. Um, so yes, that's your your introduction to uh, polygon primitives. I advise that you go through the, the list and, and again mess with the attributes. Uh, it's fun what you can discover in uh, for basic shapes starting out. All right, uh, see you next time.